as what we listen to music through seems to have gone full circle it leaves you wondering whether the quality of the sound is getting any better and whether I should have really just stuck with the ghetto blast that I had back in the 1980s I look at the record player that my grandmother used to have a bush record player and really I used to look at this thing with an amount of scorn and disapproval and almost laughed at it as a teenager and yet what do we see in the shops today you look at the likes of HMV is retro versions of exactly the same thing now this retro player that my grandmother had weighed an absolute ton it was solid it had the grill at the front with the speaker in and the record player itself uh, made like some kind of baker light and you could stack your singles up and play them it would drop them down play it stylus would come off automatically drop the next one down absolutely destroyed your records the stylus on it i don't know if it had been replaced put it up and yet we see exactly the same kind being reproduced today but on the other hand my dad back in the 1970s had a 1970s sanyo record player a lot better big speakers here too you could stack your singles up and it would drop them down have lots of memories of listening to things like dark side of the moon i remember uh, the electric light orchestras don't let them um, don't bring me down being played at full blast but one fateful date in 1984 my dad came home with a hitachi ghetto blaster this thing i'd seen nothing like it before the sound quality was absolutely amazing on it previous to that that had a bush or like this orange transistor radio which most of the music was listened to through the day it progressed on another transistor radio that actually it was mono but it had a tape player on and you could record songs from the radio which was a, quite a skill I had to be able to cut out the DJ's voice because he always used to talk through the end of the song but to get this Hitachi ghetto blaster I don't think there's anything I've ever had that's actually reached that kind of level of excitement and actually equaled the sound quality almost that I heard as a teenager what did it have on it well it had these massive speakers it had a tape player and it had a radio on it and that seemed absolutely amazing at the time you could record off the radio with this it also had a Dolby which if you flick the switch it would turn green and it would take all the hiss out of your tapes it had a tape counter designed for and I'm sure of it so that you could edit your video uh, your video your cassette so that you didn't get the DJ's voice in and you could pause it in exactly the spot where he was about to step in ready and queued up to record the next song more you know 1980s piracy you could call it and people used to argue over whether it was legal to record off the radio but why else would you want a tape player in the first place it also had on it these little um, needles that used to go up and down when the sound was on which absolutely served absolutely no purpose whatsoever really but look the part that also lit up which made the whole experience brilliant but the sound that came out i still remember metro radio being on with paddy mac d the dj and his voice sounded like chocolate and it was as a kid it was just this thing was absolutely amazing then one day in i think it was 1985 my dad also bought something hitachi and it was separates a hi-fi in a unit with a record player now this thing you could record from your lps or your vinyl records on a tape now i must have bought millions of tdk tapes joined south shields record library and you could hire a, a vinyl record you take it home and i think the first one i ever got out was queen and night at the opera and you could because you could get two lps and uh, live killers and recorded them on a tape for my walkman now i couldn't afford a sony walkman at the time so i had a matsui one which really had all these tapes all my queen tapes labeled 
went to school with me orange headphones on pocket full of batteries inside pocket with me walkman or me matsui personal stereo in any other pocket pocket full of tapes went through batteries galore kind of every saturday was buying tapes to record more music onto them and really nothing ever equaled that sound quality any of i mean my dad's stereo you could fade in and out as you re recorded stuff off the radio some of the stuff i record i remember recording the cross and an interview with uh, roger taylor on uh, alan robson's rock show miss wished i'd kept that now but something changed we, we were really happy with the quality it sounded absolutely amazing when i got into queen dad actually gave me the hitachi um ghetto blaster it was mine it was in my room I think it's the first time i heard queen live at wembley 1986 this was broadcast via uh, the tv and on fm radio amazing experience the sound quality to me was nothing has ever equaled that but then things started to change and it's this man's fault in my eyes timmy mallet now my dad would become visibly angry when this man came on tv am timmy mallet and why do i hate him <laughs> he was the first person i'd seen advertised compact discs they were advertised as being indestructible you could play them you could go out and use them as a frisbee and get the dog to collect it up and bring it back and then you could still bring it into the house put it in your cd player and it would play absolutely perfectly who wanted vinyl records that were all scratchy it would jump and everybody bought into the idea of compact discs you can flick through skip um tracks well obviously when you were playing vinyl or tapes you didn't really skip tracks but the cd did it's like having the band in the room with you biggest miss selling of an item ever because cds weren't indestructible and a lot of people would say that the music had been compressed and you weren't getting as much you weren't as punchy as what the vinyl records were but we all bought in we all started getting rid of vinyl tapes with a poor man's way of listening to music I went out and bought, I had a MIDI or a mini hi-fi and I bought an Alba CD player and had some big speakers in my room, bought Queen's Greatest Hits 2 on CD, didn't buy it on vinyl, bought it on CD. I remember getting a, I got a Philips Ghetto Blaster, see the picture of this one, it had the tape player and the CD lid on the top we all thought that if we opened the lid while the cd was playing that we'd all be nuclearized because of the the laser that was in it some people were quite frightened of that at the time but it didn't have the same something that me 1980s ghetto blaster had although it, it never jumped and it was always crystal clear and I think from the CD age, we got sort of getting rid of vinyl, all the shops, the, the South Shields Record Library was phasing out the vinyl, CDs were coming in, you went into places like uh, Virgin Record Shop, they were phasing out vinyl and it was becoming all CDs and we're all kind of forced down the road. Biggest mistake I ever made was buying a CD Walkman. Uh, that didn't have anti at the time it didn't have the anti-roll thing so it was too big to fit in your inside pocket it didn't let you walk on when you played it because it would jump I remember sitting on the bus with me cd walkman in hand with my headphones on like this so it didn't jump it would play one cd and your batteries would come out so you were going to do hundreds of pounds worth of duracell batteries just trying to play something then she scrapped that and just went back to me went back to an, an ordinary Walkman or a personal stereo. Now I'd always had a almost elevated attitude towards myself because my dad had this amazing Hitachi separate hi-fi, I had my ghetto blaster. One day in the early 1990s, my good friend who lived around the corner, his uncle had gifted him Technics separates hi-fi. Absolutely, amazing. five CD changer, record player the thing was absolutely huge and massive speakers the whole thing 
lit up and the sound quality seemed amazing. And I was used to hang my head wishing that I'd had that. But after that seemed pinnacle of the 1990s where everybody was buying separates that cost an absolute fortune, there seemed to be this like a sudden decrease in, in the quality of what we listen to music through. Like the get up the Phillips get up blaster, although it had played CDs, it didn't seem to have the quality that the 1980s one had. It just didn't have that extra something. We went to a whole, I remember buying um, a mini disc player. I think I quite liked them because it was CD quality, you could edit on them. They didn't last. I remember having a Yamaha four track recorder, which worked on tapes. And when I'd recorded the songs, I would put them on a mini disc player. Then all of a sudden, when everything went from CDs to MP3s, we were listening to music through our computers, our music was downloaded, you had MP3 sticks. Remember buying, you could get iPhone docking stations, which all your music was on iTunes, but the quality of some of them were horrendous. Um, where you were, you were almost seem to be going back to listen to transistor radio quality with all the new technology and everything had gone retro and i feel as if it gone full circle you see in the background there i bought an iwa separates with 200 watt speakers on facebook marketplace for 30 pound absolute giveaway price if you look on there there's people probably giving these things away almost free the quality um, my kids, when their teenage friends come around, if I've got my hi-fi on and I'm playing music, they all go, oh, what, what's that? That sounds absolutely amazing. And they think I've got thousands of pounds worth of equipment. £30 on Facebook at the time in the early 90s would have cost an absolute fortune. And to some degree, I tend to think that going back over to some of the older, um, like the 90s separates, I feel as if I got rid of all my vinyl in, in the early 2000s because nobody wanted vinyl anymore. Completely regret that with all. And then I ended up getting rid of all my CDs for MP3s. When you think of uh, on Apple Music, they talk about the quality of that's being compressed all of the time. It's obviously a lot easier on an iPhone with your uh, headphones on to walk around listening to music on Apple Music. You don't have to download anything, it's just there to lis listen to. But in the house, when you're listening to something quality, there's nothing better than a 1980s or a 1990s hi-fi. Put the record on, massive speakers, full sound. So what are your thoughts? What were some of the devices that you had? Let me know in the comments. Do you think I'm right that uh, the, we've gone full circle? And it's time to start thinking about bringing back some of the older uh, gear and listening to music through that. And that we haven't really improved as much as we thought we had. So as always, thank you for watching.